You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 5th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from quite a bit to the left of the Project for Doing Centrism stuff, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hi, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. Happy Independence Day plus one. Happy 500th podcast plus one. Yeah, 501. It's 501. I, I'm wearing my 501 G, uh, jeans. I'm uh, I filed us as a 501 C3 at the local no, corporate headquarters. No, I didn't. <laughs> 501, everybody, and yeah. thank you to everyone who sent us a a multiple of five for our podcast anniversary. Mm-hmm. We appreciate that. You can still send five dollars and one cent this week if sure. you haven't if you haven't caught up with that. Or I'll, round up to the nearest twenty. Really, right. that'd be fine. That's perfectly okay. Also, um, my birthday is in 11 days. I'm going to do a full youngest child here because the yes. youngest child reminds us of her birthday. Her birthday is exactly two months after the day after Christmas. So yes. from Christmas on, she is reminding us about her birthday for the, that eight-week period. <laughs> yes. It's our own version of Hanukkah. Right. It's a countdown I, right. each it year. It is. We count, count it down. You know, mm-hmm. the mul- there's different things that are done every week because it's her mm-hmm. birthday coming up, you know. That's right. But anyway, I love getting birthday cards. So if uh, you want to send us either an anniversary card or a birthday card, uh, the P.O. Box is working. And uh-huh. uh, it's at the opening of the show and also at ProLeftPod.com. We'd love to hear from you. And Drift Class, uh, first of all, we want to talk about something that happened last week. And I want Drift Class to talk about that. Yes. The little old lady cat passed away last week. Yes, she did. Um, our our ancient and noble uh, creature Zeppo, um, who uh, was the uh, inspiration for the globally popular freshly poured cat food mm-hmm. and many other Zeppo based products, <laughs> such as tub water. It's water from the tub. Um, also, would Zeppo like some whipped cream? And why call it baby food when it's obviously Zeppo food? Uh, she was a, a old lady cat, and she had reached the end of her days, and so we had to take her to the vet. Uh, literally right after uh, we recorded podcast. Yep we we didn't want we didn't want to cry during our podcast, so we just sort of kept yeah. it on the down low. Uh, mm-hmm. And and I loved the um, way you f- you framed uh, having Zeppo uh, leave hospice as she did because she yes. was very she very did. ill. The vet was um, mm-hmm. immediately reacted to oh wow she's in bad shape. Uh, yeah. And it was time. And and this is a, something time. that pet owners have to go through. Uh, yes. And it's a, a good lesson for the children, actually. In, in it is. Passing it's on. And this happens when cats get very old. And mm-hmm. uh, she was 18 and a half. So she had had a she very was. good long life. Well, she and uh, just a quick side story. She was born literally in my lap. That's right. Uh, almost literally. I was conducting a writer's group back at Castle Drift Class many, many, many years ago. Uh, in Chicago, and her mom had been getting larger and larger. Her mom was a street cat, and I just assumed that she was eating a lot because she was making up for lost time. Um, the vet I took the mom to told me she was in great shape, she was well and healthy, didn't tell me she was pregnant. Um, so I, being an idiot, didn't notice any difference until her water broke on my leg. Oh. Um, and I just assumed she'd peed on my leg because of all the people in, in my condo, and which was very unusual for her, but what the hell. And then a little while later, some of my uh, guests and the writers were who'd gone to the bathroom said, uh, uh, "There's some weird noises coming from the back of the <laughs> back of this place." And there were three little kittens back there, and Zeppo was one of them. So I've had her since day one. Yeah. Um, and uh, through trial and tribulation, through being an antisocial lunatic to being a very social, older um, dowager empress of a kitty who yes. just runs everything in the house, and. And, of course, the, it, it hit the kids pretty hard because this was their first pet they'd had. This is the first four-leg pet they'd had for a long time. Right, right. Uh, who was part of their daily routine, and we check in on her and see how she's doing. And uh, so I was. I had driven the, the lads 
a junior dude and his friends to uh, to a movie and was picking them up from it. And he was sort of with his friends and processing how sad he was. And and we talked a little bit about the difference between sadness and tragedy and that it's OK to be sad. Sad is when, you know, your your the, 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 your great uncle lives to be 100, has a great life, accomplishes much of or, or, not, or all of what he or she um, wished to do. And and dies uh, a peaceful death at the end of a long and productive life. Mm-hmm. That's sad. Yeah, we can all feel very sad for that. That's the Jerry Gergich death in uh, Parks and Rec. Yeah, right, right. You're mayor for eight terms. You're surrounded by five generations who love you, and uh, your life worked out great. You can still be really sad because you're left behind. Tragedy, on the other hand, is when uh, it, it when a young person is cut down too early. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, tragedy. I said tra- tragedy is Hamlet. Everybody dies. <laughs> Hamlet, yes, that's a tragedy. <laughs> Hamlet is a tra- <laughs> so it's called a tragedy, and that was something that that they had not thought about. Right, it was just you know the world is divided into these two halves. It's it's, it's a little more subtle than that. So we were sad. Um, I, I I telling people last week I did two things I haven't done in years. Uh, we picked up a hitchhiker and I dug a grave. So <laughs> and, and those two had nothing to do with each other. We uh we, no. we picked up a gentleman who who tire had blown out uh, yeah. on the way to the airport. Yep. And drove him to a gas station. Right. And then when Zeppo came home, it was raining outside and we had to dig grave for her and 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 plant her in the backyard, as as you do. Next to her mom. Um, next to her mom. Oh yeah. We have a little kitty cemetery in the back now. Mm-hmm. And uh it really was her time and it was not yeah. it's it's interesting. I mean, we don't I don't want to belabor this whole point, the the dead cat show, but uh right. it is interesting to me that now that she's been gone for a week, I'm a, much more aware of how much we did for her and how much we've maintained her life and how much work it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she required special food. She required a pristine litter box. Uh, yes. she, re, she You had to be kind of constantly maintaining, is she okay? Is she eating? Is she breathing? And every yeah. morning I woke up, I was checked to see where she was wondering if she'd survive the night and i'd been doing that for a year yeah. uh and then you know she did what cats do she stopped eating and drinking and she, she was clearly suffering from kidney failure and uh it was time and the vet immediately said oh yeah you know you did made the right decision bringing her in and she went to sleep and and you were petting her and she went to sleep and uh yeah. so yeah. it was it was it was sad but it, like you say it was not tragic it was uh well, time. And yeah, it, this it's a good thing for for kids, especially yeah. to sort of handle that show how how to handle grieving correctly, right. how to handle it right. properly. Um, and it is perfectly okay and, and for grown men to cry yes, it when is. beloved yes, things it pass. Is. So it's perfectly okay no. to cry. Um, and it's and then I bet my lovely wife two dollars that within a week, uh, we'll be getting requests for a puppy or a dog. And it five turned dogs, out it was a pig. pig or a parrot. <laughs> Yes. Middle child yes. wants a oh. pig. <laughs> yes. And I and, and I just to sort of elide to a larger sort of um theme for our home and our house, uh this is never gonna be a house that is with, gonna be without pets and without right. kids. Right. It just, it just isn't. isn't this is this is that, this house. Is that house. There's always gonna be a motley collection of kids and their friends, even if they're foster kids, even if they're neighborhood kids, and there's gonna be a bunch of animals around here and it's that's just the house gonna be a ramshackle artist place uh, full of joy and uh, occasional uh, hairballs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just the way of it. That's the way it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And we're grateful. So, we're grateful for the opportunity. So the, the gypsy woman's prediction came true and I'm the gypsy woman. Yes. <laughs> we have been predicting uh, a tea party redo rebranding of the Republican party. Uh, for, for years now, yes, and, uh, I, we knew this was going to happen. Sure, uh, when Trump was the nominee, and mm-hmm. I wrote an article called "Don't You Dare Call It Trumpism" in July, August of 2016, before Trump mm-hmm. was elected, saying, "Look, there's going to be a Tea Party rebranding. We can't allow that. This is." Uh, what they do, they shit the yeah. bed and then they pretend it's not them and it never happened. And uh, sure enough, this week, July 3rd, uh, op-ed in USA Today from Bob Garfield of NPR. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, He wrote an op-ed about civic uh, duties and uh, the decay of civic responsibilities in America. And he did not mention Republicans. He did not mention Donald Trump. He did not mention... (laughs) He did not mention Newt Gingrich. Uh, he did News, not nope. mention Fox News or uh, Mitch McConnell. He nope. he did mention that there is a 2018 Edelman Trust Barometer from 2018, mind you. I want you to have that date in your head. Mm-hmm. That in one year's time, U.S. citizens' aggregate trust for government business, non-governmental organizations, and the free press plummeted 37 percent in one year oh no just totally uh independent of any historical event or fact that might have happened in 2017 like the inauguration of donald trump Mm -hmm. uh and then a 2017 remember what year was that again 2017 what happened that year yeah i remember some inauguration of donald trump happened Mm -hmm. in 2017 uh A survey of 5,000 voters by the Democracy Fund found that 24% of the public Uh said, quote, rule by a strong leader who does not have to bother with Congress and elections is a very good or fairly good way to run a country. Mm -hmm. And 18% said the same about, quote, army rule. Yeah. So, uh, and, you know, that was a mix of liberals, Democrats, Republicans, and just sure. generic voter. Sure. I mean, no, just it folks. wasn't. No, no it, it wasn't. Was, no, it was all on one side of the spectrum. But he but doesn't say that. He talks about this that. is a public problem. A this social is a problem. Social mm-hmm. problem. This is hearts and minds. This mm-hmm. is this is a sickness on the American psyche. Mm-hmm. And he, the result of this article, or the purpose of this article, is to promote a new movement, Drift Glass. A new, a new movement, Blue Gal. Tell me more about this exciting it, new movement I'd like to join. It's an exciting new movement called the Purple Project. Really? Does mm-hmm. it involve purple things? It involves uh, blending. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> Erasing the red, I think, is what they want yeah. to do. They don't Let's just pretend. think about red at red's all. <laughs> not, red's not good. Red's not the color yeah. for the season. No. No, no we want mm-hmm. to think about... Uh, the psyche of America and right. and civic duty and love for our institutions and love for democracy, really. This democracy project does have a Twitter account with no tweets oh, yet. Yeah, well, that's, it points yeah. to a website that doesn't exist yet. Mm-hmm. But they do have a press release, Drift Glass. They do. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and there's a whole bunch of people on this press release, some people from... Uh, Retired people from the media and generic people, but there's also uh, a telltale sign that the American Enterprise Institute is involved with this project, Drift Yeah, yeah. And so is the Ronald yeah. Reagan Library. Yeah. You know who's, who yeah, was be, a big deal in the Ronald Reagan Library? Hugh Hewitt. Hugh Hewitt. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is a rebranding effort to make... Uh, the Republican Party not be about Donald Trump or about anything. Right. And if we can just go back to just getting along as Americans and and loving democracy and our civic institutions, we'll be fine. Yes. If I may just make one correction. Yeah. This is not the rebranding of the Republican Party. This is the re 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 rebranding exactly. of the Republican exactly. Party. This is the this is the latest addition to the No Labels, Centrist Project, Niskanen Center, Unite America, Problem Solver Caucus bullshit that's been going on for years. I would even because argue Up time... With People was the yeah. same kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and let's not forget the Howard Schultz to Steve Schmidt Fund Transfer Project, <laughs> which was, I want to be independent because that's, I, I, someone told me that's how you run for president now. And, and, uh, and Steve Schmidt said, sure, give me a lot of money and I'll show you how to do that. And it's you attack both sides. Yeah. Um, and of course, this is the and this is pretty much gonna be the focus of this podcast. Absolutely. Um, this week, because this is so fucking maddening. Everyone knows this is bullshit. Everyone, everyone involved in these stupid projects, everyone paying for these stupid projects, everyone at some level understands that this is just fucking nonsense. 
that the Republican Party is not a dying party. The Republican Party is a dead party. And the Republican Party was killed by Republicans. It was killed because they cornered the market on that 24% on the, on the crazy and the ignorant and the racist and the, and the xenophobic and the homophobic and the gun nuts. They put them all in one party to win elections. And then they became surprised when they became the party of xenophobic, homophobic, racist, gun nut assholes. And all the people that put built the monster now really don't want to take responsibility for it. But they also don't want to acknowledge that that is actually the Republican Party. So they have to keep coming up with these bullshit, both sides, uh, a third way, party of Joe Lieberman invented boutique projects to keep redefining the center as if there is a center anymore. There isn't a center. There's a party that wants to give people affordable health care, and there's a party that wants to put babies in cages. Those are your two fucking choices. And the, the people who want to squeeze their asses into the middle are cowards and liars, and they're the worst kinds of fraud because they know it's not true. They know it's bullshit, but they know there's a dollar to be made there by saying, no, no, don't worry. There's still a third way. We can still blame both sides for everything the Republicans do, and we can all crowd together in the imaginary middle, and they're going to be perfectly happy to take the money from gullible millionaires and billionaires who are willing to pay to have their fantasies enacted, which is a reasonable middle, and for a bunch of, think, frankly, a tiny demographic sliver of, of fence-straddling cowards who will not take a stand on anything, who would rather see the country burn than, than expe express a preference between the two political parties that exist in their country. And that's what this is about. This is a, this eternal return to the glorious center that never existed, doesn't exist now, ain't going to exist in the future, because facing the fact that the Republican Party, the Republicans you know, Republican friends, Republican colleagues, Republican people you voted for are monsters who created a horrible party that does shitty things is more than their little hearts can bear. So they will pay like a John paying a hooker for someone to dress up and pretend there's a third alternative to this. And it wasn't their fault in the first place. And this, that brings us to Justin Amash. Yeah. Well, you want to talk about him first. And then I, I did find out that the purpleforddemocracy.org website is up now. So oh, I wanted to buy it so bad. Uh, so Justin bad. Amash. You know what Justin Amash said this week, Drift Class? He what said, you, I, I'm an independent. I'm an independent. Yeah. yeah Justin Amash uh, it got a lot of headlines because for some reason we give people um, who are centrist uh, columns in the Washington Post. So they gave him his own column on, on the 4th of July when he declared his independence from, from the not the Republican Party. But the partisan death spiral oh. that both parties are involved oh. with—it's—it's it's in the red team and the blue team. That's that's what wrecked America. Having this that that thing that where there's one side and the other side, and there's two sides. That's what wrecked America, and it's both sides, both sides, both sides, both sides, all the way down. I read this whole fucking article. There's like five paragraphs quoting Washington. Yep. About the the horrors of partisanship. That's a Chuck Great. Todd line. Yep, that comes yep. straight out of Chuck Todd. Yep. But then it's all about. These same independent-minded Americans, however, tend to be less politically engaged than the red team and blue team activists. Yeah, it's just, it's so predictable. Mm -hmm. This is this sort of pairs like really shitty beer and a really shitty burger uh, <laughs> with, with, the, uh, with the Never Trumpers. Yeah, yeah. Who are now, they, they have their own little thing going and their own little thing is, uh, we're not going to talk about who fucked up the Republican Party because we did. We're not going to talk about who's to blame for anything because we are. We are going to sit on the – we're not going to decamp ourselves to Massachusetts and work for Bill Weld, who's the only Republican who's actually standing up right here, right now to Donald Trump in the primaries. Instead, we're going to string a hammock between the gig at MSNBC that we get every week and the column in the New York Times we get every week. And just sit there and bitch. We're gonna we're gonna just sit there and write shitty Yelp reviews of the Democratic Party because right. they're not servicing our needs the way we feel we deserve to be served. And it's the same kind of absolute arrogance that needs to be broken on the wheel. Well, and if or if it wasn't enough of an admission that your party is dead, that your right. house burned your party... to the ground, so you come over to our house and start redecorating and say, mm -hmm. yeah, sofa shouldn't go there. You know, I'm not comfortable with the sofa there. This is our house. This is the Democratic Party. If you want to join the Democratic Party, do it. 
But no, right. I'm an independent. I'm a constitutional I conservative. I have no home right. anymore because Trump mm -hmm. took it over and burned it to the ground. So I'll come and move in with you and tell you right. what to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a few of these guys, Rick Wilson, <laughs> I'm thinking specifically, is willing to say in his indignation at Democrats not taking his advice. Yeah. That And I'm quoting now from his Twitter stream, which I had sent to me because Rick Wilson blocks me for saying things like this. <laughs> it's not as if I spent 30 years kicking the living shit out of Democratic candidates all across the country. What do I know? Now, here's the thing. This is absolutely true. Rick Wilson did indeed spend his entire adult life as a GOP mercenary, marshalling the darkest, most repulsive impulses of rage and racism and paranoia on the right, and focusing him to win elections for his scumbag clients. He helped, he helped Republicans corner the market on bigots and imbeciles, and thus, over the long run, helped sow the dragon's teeth that eventually grew into the beast Trump. Now, what I don't understand is what sort of sick fuck would actually brag about that? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and who would offer it as his top-of-the-line resume to a party which is diametrically opposed to everything he stands for? We don't want to do that. You created a toxic waste dump. Your strategies, your approach to politics, your whole life, your soul is what killed your party. We don't want any part of that. If you would like to come over here and tell us the name of Mitch McConnell's mistress or where we, <laughs> where we, can, get, where we can get photographs that are as embarrassing to Lindsey Graham as the one apparently that, that Donald Trump has, we'd love to have your help in that regard. But quit telling people who are trying to clean up the fucking mess you made how to clean up the mess you made to meet your exacting specifications right. go to go to massachusetts work for bill weld but shut up and, and here's the thing they won't they won't there is there is a force alive in the media that squats on top of nbc and cbs and abc and cable news and the new york times and the washington post that simply insists that these people have voices and people like us do not even though it's clear that what they're talking about is just nuts. That if Donald Trump proved anything, anything, it's that these people have no fucking idea what they're talking about because they told us this could never happen, that this, their party was not like that. Yep. So it turns out they're 100% wrong about everything all the time. We've been right all the time. And the problem is that television and newspapers are a commercial enterprise and they can't allow their enterprise, their free press, their, their, their First Amendment platform to be used to explain to the American public that a third of the American public are stone-cold, reprogrammable meatbags who can't be trusted with power. That doesn't sell reverse mortgages, that doesn't sell ads, and that won't sell Lexuses. So they will not allow that simple, bare, ugly truth to be used, to be, to be talked about under their platform. Instead, they invite these idiots on television to debate the center. And to critique Democrats and talk about how Democrats are doing it all wrong. And we are repeating, not you and I, mind you, the media is repeating exactly the same mistake that they made last time and the time before and the time before that. Right. And once you start repeating the mistake that many times, you start to figure out this isn't a mistake. This is your business model, which I think. This is the model for how to rebrand to, a, to keep a two-party system where one party is fundamentally evil going which is both sides and does that bring right. us to rebecca traster at all it does well. uh and it brings us i i do want to point out that you know the the excuses that the mainstream media has made for donald trump's election being economic anxiety and you know economic anxiety simply flips the switch to racism for a lot of Republican right, voters. Right. That's what it does. If you're fat and happy and getting your good paycheck and have a have a stable job, uh, you're willing to elect someone who's not Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. But if you are feeling that anxiety, it's the Mexicans' fault. So that I do believe that there is an economic anxiety component to all of this. Sure. I'm willing to go along with that. But when it flips over to absolute Nazi like racism. This is this is a pattern that happened in Germany. Yes, it is. Clear. Clear. And and if you don't see the, the connections there, go back and relearn history because Well, look up uh they, they thought they were free. They thought they were free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh I want to get to Rebecca Tracer, but here's the uh Purple for Democracy is pretending to be a civic engagement organization. Yeah. Yeah. Which I find hilarious. 
because uh, what they are demanding is what has already happened in the Democratic Party, yeah. particularly with women. <laughs> yes. Proceed. We create means, we meaning the Purple Project, uh -huh. create means to stimulate civic engagement from canvassing for political candidates to testifying at the school board to volunteering at the library to serving on a jury to running for Congress to just plain voting. We have a long-term effort designed in three stages. The Autumn Awareness Campaign contemplates an online purple platform for participation that leading to our ultimate goal, a new standard of citizen participation, instilling a heightened sense of response. Okay, it just goes on, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And that, but the model for this, they say, is drunk driving. Drunk driving and not voting right. are going to be the same kind of thing that right. you will have civic participation you don't drive drunk friends don't let friends drive drunk friends don't let friends not vote right well oh, hey if, if that means you're gonna have a breathalyzer at the polling place yeah. so that if you're too stupid or racist you don't get to vote i'm for it i am for it but that seems a little extreme to me that seems like a poll tax and i'm not for no. that <laughs> well the the point is that this has already been done with indivisible groups yeah with the women's march with the blue wave with three seats in the house, with women running for office, it's all been done. And what? Who are they talking to? <laughs> who are they saying friends won't? Uh, friends opt out of voting. The vote. The electorate is very engaged right now, and they are engaged in defeating Republicans. So good luck with this. But you are trying to rebrand Republican voters, and not Democratic voters are already there. And that's the process they're trying to create. Right. The outcome they're trying to create was called the Obama administration. Right. A, a, a sane, rational, humane, centrist, um, uh, compromise to a fault, uh, never call your opponents, you know, out for the clear, criminal, seditious bullshit that they're pulling every day. No matter how many knives they stick in your back, you, you maintain a good humor. You always extend an open hand. And every time Democrats have tried that, they pull back a fucking stump every yep. time. Going back to the Clinton administration, yep. every time Democrats have said, OK, all right, we, we can all agree that problem X is big and scary and needs to be fixed. Let's I, I am agnostic as to the, the process. I don't care whose name is on it, but let's all agree we need to fix it. And every time the Democrats have done that, Republicans have said, go fuck yourself. Right. So the, the, the idea that that is not going to factor in at all, that history of American politics up until a minute ago is not going to inform your decision, your, your organization at all. You're going to build a, a paper house in the middle of, of a volcano and pretend that, that the heat isn't there, the fire isn't there, everything will last. And at, at some point, I really do need to talk to Bob Garfield. Yeah. I need to talk to one of these people and say, are you just that stupid? Or or is there you just think there's one more nickel you can scam out of these idiots who who really desperately want to believe there's a third way out there and that's and if we just if we we're just all civil with each other. What the hell is wrong with you? Why do you keep running the same bullshit scam over and over again? And I got to think that they run the same bullshit scam over and over again. The same reason Harold Hill ran the, the, the boys band scam over and over again. It worked. It works. Yep. This is what I learned. This is what I know how to do. I know how to, to get a lot of money from a lot of, of terrified shut in billionaire idiots who, who, who live in a fantasy world and want the Republican party, the Dwight Eisenhower Republican party back. I want to believe that that's the real Republican party out there. And that the, the, the Republican party that they see in front of them every day is some sort of mirage, some sort of aberration. Right and are willing to pay for you to dress up in pretty outfits and sit there and tell them what they want to believe. And Absolutely. at some point, at some point you just sort of, aren't you going to run out of patience with that? Aren't you going to run out of stupid billionaires to, to bilk for their money? Nope. And the answer is no, <laughs> of course not. There's an infinite supply yeah. of idiots who will pay to have lies told to them. One group of idiots are called Fox news viewers. They pay Fox news to lie to them about immigrants and liberals and women. There's another group of chumps out there who will pay centrist organizations to tell them that the middle way, the third way, the party of Joe Lieberman, the Justin Amash is a hero, even though there's no evidence at all that any of that is true. And every piece of evidence runs contrary to that. You don't want to hear that. Both of them are equally cut off from reality and they're codependent on each other. 
Because as long as the media is dominated by people who won't talk about what the Republican Party is really doing, then the burglar alarms are shut off. Republicans do anything they want, anything they want. They can really, they can literally, Donald Trump can literally shoot someone on Fifth Avenue. And somewhere they will find someone to sit on a panel and say it was really Barack Obama's fault. It's both parties' fault. Somehow it's everyone's fault. It's the system. It's the corrupt duopoly. Yeah. And so anyway. let me get let me get to uh, Rebecca Traister's article, which is politics is changing. Uh-huh. Why aren't the publics who cover it changing as well? Yeah. Yeah. Just, so, oh, just FYI, as we were starting our podcast, a reader slash listener sent me that very article. Uh-huh with quotes cut out of it. So it's like, this is, we're all on the same page here. Right, right. Well, and the the point of it being that Donnie Deutsch, who, uh-huh. you know, wanted to uh, bed Sarah Palin and, and have her take care of his children, you know, she yeah. was the f- feminine ideal of a woman in politics, uh, is now uh, claiming that, you know, I like Elizabeth Warren, but uh, no. And no. Uh, Kamala Harris, ah, uh, no. And, and it's, and it's Joe Scarborough and Chris Matthews and Donnie Deutsch telling America and telling MSNBC who is a viable candidate or not. Right. And the history of those three men when it comes to female candidates, progressive candidates, and and just understanding where the world is right now in terms of how angry women are, mm-hmm. they don't get it. No. Rebecca Traster, by the way, she's the author of Good and Mad. So she is really focused in on women's anger and how furious women are right now that Donald Trump was even elected. Chris Matthews actually asked Kamala Harris, how is it possible that you don't just hate white people? Framing the whole argument over busing and Joe Biden and so forth uh-huh. as angry black woman, uh, hate white people. You know, let's frame it completely right. that way instead of really looking at her history and giving her an opportunity to talk about what kind of policy she wants to bring to the racial divide. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, I recommend it. It's, it's in the cut.com and do check oh, it out. Yeah, we'll have the link up on yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Beck couldn't have said it better. You know, I think that Barack <laughs> Obama hates yeah. white people yeah. and white institutions. Yeah. And, and honestly, the right answer from, for Kamala Harris, who doesn't need to take advice from me, is I don't hate white people, but I, right now I'm kind of hating you, Chris. Hating you, Chris. Yeah. You're just yep. a big, loud, dumb asshole. Yep. A big, old <laughs> Irish asshole whose memory seems to skip over the whole Iraq war part. Yep. Uh, when you were real <laughs> big on that. And it doesn't matter how many time, how many Mark Halperins you fire or how many Matt Lowers you fire or how many Charlie Roses you fire. There'll always be more. Yeah. There'll always be more because that's the model. That's, that is what the default setting of network executives believes America looks like, sounds like, and should be listening to is overbearing, clueless white guys. Yep. And I, I, I fit all those categories. Like, I am overbearing. <laughs> yeah, I am you're... often clueless and I'm a white guy. So you have why a I don't have my own show? Keeping you in line. Well, there's the class. thing. There's the thing. <laughs> and I don't have, so I don't know why I don't have my own show on MSNBC. I really don't yeah, understand. Yeah, you, you should. Uh, you but, should. You're the white guy who would you know, talk over any woman. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. Uh, I do know why. and It's because I live in the wrong zip code and I say the wrong thing. Yeah. Uh, but the, I, I, the problem that, that uh, you and I both have is that – and the reason we went into podcasting and the reason we went into blogging uh, early on was that we were not hearing anything like our voices being represented right. in the media. While at the same time we could see what was going on around us was not being discussed anywhere. It was just simply not part of the conversation. And we were, we and a bunch of other liberal bloggers and the liberal bloggers who were pounding on the glass going, don't you see what's happening to the GOP? Why won't you talk about this? Why won't you talk about Fox News? And the answer was basically from network executives, we're terrified. Yeah. Yeah. The right, this is a center right country and the Republicans are in power and they're going to be in power forever. So if we start asking them, you know, pushing them, pointing, poking them with the stick, we're going to get screwed. And so- from the beginning, I th- this is maybe something that we should make clear to new listeners. Uh, our, our older listeners can have figured all this out. But the basic charter of this podcast has always been the following. That things are screwed up, and this is why we think they're screwed up. And here's what we think should be done about it. It's just that simple. And if things aren't screwed up, there'll be no more podcasts. <laughs> Well, we, I promise you that both sides is going to continue for many, many eons to come. 
And and that's the, the problem. The important thing to do is to as much as we are capable of doing this, spread the mm-hmm. word, let people know what to watch for, because this is you could have passed by this purple America, please vote, please become involved in civic institutions, yeah, no. pablum, and not no. seen it yeah. for what it is. Yeah, that's the mole that looks funny. Like, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute, that is not right. That's And you know it's going to go bad. You know yep. it's going to get big and bad, and then it'll disappear and be replaced by something else, because it's simply a lie. Right. And it may work, it may not for them, uh, but I guarantee you there will be other efforts. This uh, Justin Amash thing is absolutely out of the Joe Lieberman playbook of I just want to oh, yeah. keep my job, yeah. and so I'll run as an independent. And his district is so far right that uh and gerrymandered that he got more votes than donald trump did because he's a right wing never spend any money uh libertarian and and there's a this is this sort of puts paid a decade ago right a decade ago i wrote a a post called the independent grand falloon yes right right and the independent the grand falloon for those of you who don't know is is a phrase out of uh, kurt vonnegut Mm -hmm. that's a a proud and meaningless association of human beings like Hoosiers. They have nothing in common with each other, but they call themselves by one name and it makes them feel good about that. And my point was the word independent doesn't mean anything because you can be all kinds of weird shit. It's like the idea that moderate doesn't mean anything. When you, when you read polling, it's a bullshit term. Everyone, like my wife explained to me today, everyone thinks they're a moderate. Yes, everyone thinks yes, they're a moderate. That's right. But when you go down issue by issue by issue, oh, you're a liberal Democrat. No, no, I'm a moderate. Why? Because liberal Democrats are, you know, crazy liberal bloggers like you. And No, every issue that you weigh in on, you are way to the left of the center point. Right. And and but people don't want to be that because that's scary out there. They want to be considered at the center, the reasonable middle, the sensible center, the moderate. Well, and so Class, what brought that up for me was hearing from youngest child who's off with her dad for a couple of weeks this summer and she's 15, has her permit. And wants me to know she's a very good driver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a wonderful driver. Everybody yes. on the road is going too fast or too slow. I'm doing just uh-huh. right. Perfect. She's perfect. <laughs> and that yep. is where we are politically. Most people think of themselves as being middle class in the center, not an extremist. You know, you don't wake up in the morning and say, how extreme can I be? You know, you right. think your p- opinions must be what most Americans think. And, and here's when the you thing. drill down and ask people, are you for Social Security? Are you for Medicaid for disabled people? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you, lo- now, except for the Republican Party, do you like how migrants are being treated at the border? Right. No, most people do not. That does not make you a left-wing extremist that you like Social Security. But it does. It That is a left of center position because right. the Republican party wants to take away your pensions, your health care. Mm-hmm. Th- they want zero sp- to zero out that kind of government spending. That's what Justin Amash wants to do. Yeah. And that's, uh, but that, and that's, the, but that's, that's the point it's. Yeah. And I wrote another one a million years ago about Andrew Sullivan. Yes, and he wrote on right. all the positions he holds, uh, and, but he was, he wrote an article uh, telling, I think it was Michelle Malkin that I'm not a leftist. I'm not an angry leftist. That's not me. I'm not a left because it's because people in that universe in that media universe are so scared of being tagged as a liberal, which means you're never going to get another gig on TV again, that they scramble to say, no, no, I'm a moderate. I'm a moderate. I'm a moderate. Being a liberal costs you something. Right. You're going to be sent out to sea to be on democracy now and that's it. Or have to have a podcast. That's it. Right. Yeah. That's it. If, if you declare yourself to be a liberal, a lefty like us, it f- financially and socially costs yeah. you something, especially li- when you live in a red area. People do not want to bear that cost, but they know issue by issue that this is the proper place to stand. So the, the test was for David Brooks a fucking decade ago when he noticed right after Barack Obama was elected um, and the Tea Party began, suddenly there's all these independents <laughs> everywhere. And he started writing about this new independent yes. movement who all seem to be very conservative and maybe Democrats should should craft their message to be more towards independents. No, they're all a bunch of former Republicans who were scared shitless of being held responsible for, voting for, Bush for the shit twice. they did. Right. They voted for Bush twice. And they ran yep. like hell. 
They burned their uniforms like German soldiers after World War II, and they ran for the hills, and they called themselves independent. So the test is, all right, Justin Amash wants to zero out every social program, is a hard, hard, hard right libertarian. He is an independent. Bernie Sanders is a democratic socialist who wants to give everyone free college and free health care. He is an independent. Do these two people have anything in common? No, they are diametrically opposed to each other on virtually every issue, but they call themselves the same Mm -hmm. thing. They call themselves independent, thus proving the word independent doesn't mean a goddamn thing, except, again, when you're on TV. Then it's a license Mm -hmm. to print money. Then you can get get a gig anywhere. If you declare yourself boldly uh, a never-Trumper, you know, I was a Republican for a long time, Blue Gal, long time. Did a lot of Republican stuff. Don't want to talk about it. Kind of dirty. Don't want to talk about it. But now I'm an independent. And, and I want to get on television and tell Democrats how they should become the party of Reagan. That's what I want to do. And that will get you a book deal, a column in the New York Times. And, and the minute Donald Trump is gone, those assholes will go right back to being the same fucking Republicans they've always been yeah. because that's who they are. And that's what's maddening about this. Knowing what's going to happen next. Knowing what will break next. Knowing how perilous our democracy is uh perilously close our democracy Mm -hmm. is to dying and watching people inside the beltway just still fiddling like nothing's happening like this law pass over it won't affect them if you think what drift glass is saying Mm -hmm. may not be true look at what happened to ornstein and Mann when they said no this is the republicans fault yes yes they were blackballed from television yes these were people who were who were respected uh moderates uh, one is left, one was right. They wrote social s- science stuff. They wrote opinion stuff. And they got on every show. They they talked a lot. And one day they finally sat down and were honest with themselves and said, if we have to be honest, we have got to be honest. It's just the Republicans. It's not both sides. It really isn't. It's one party has lost its fucking mind. And let's write an article. And it was simultaneously the most emailed and linked article mm-hmm. they had ever written. Mm-hmm. And it killed their career on television. Right. Because you do not put people on television who st- sit there and say, Matthew Dowd is wrong, and Ron Fournier is wrong, and David Brooks is wrong, and Brett Stevens is wrong, and Joe Scarborough is wrong, because it's not fucking both sides. It's one side. Right. Nobody gets to be, to play in that universe. And the problem is, that's the only game in town. We don't have another media out there where liberals can go and tell their truth, other than podcasts and, and blogging. It's it's the spotlight. It's the, it's the place where millions of Americans go to spend 15 minutes or 20 minutes watching Chuck Todd so they can feel smart. And that's a tragedy because what Chuck Todd and his friends are doing to our democracy is what created the conditions to bring us Donald Trump. And they're never going to stop until they are boycotted or until they fear the left more exactly. than they fear the hey, right. Hey, Drift Class, uh, before we do mm-hmm. a news roundup, I'd like to give a couple of shout outs. Um, our- sure. Angel Nerd Tammy uh, pointed out that there is a website called lightsforliberty.org, L-I-G-H-T-S-F-O-R, liberty.org, which is uh, doing activism and showing up at uh, migrant camps on the border and taking action. And they're going to be doing something next week. I do recommend everyone, I will be tweeting this out uh, over the weekend as well lightsforliberty.org. Go check it out. Thank you, Tammy, for bringing that to my attention. Um, I want to do a shout out to Dogface Herman for a couple of reasons. One is uh, he was in the hospital and he's out and he's better and he's recovering, but I wish him well and he's in my thoughts. And um, he sent some yarn to me uh, from his Dorset sheep. And I sent some to your sister, Driftglass, as you know, you mailed it yes, for me. Yes, you did. Yes, uh, you did. She's already dyed uh-huh. a skein with <laughs> <laughs> with some fennel and, <laughs> and uh, sent me a picture when you, you got to know a knitter when, uh, and your sister is a knitter. Right. Um, yes. Sending spun Dorset wool to Arizona in July. And she goes, Oh, yay. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's commitment. And I knew she'd love it. And mm-hmm. she did. And so thank you, Doc based Herman for the yarn And uh, it is being dyed and played with, and I I have some, and she has some, and we're having a good time with it. Uh, I also wanted to uh, do a shout out to uh, listener, friend of the show, Robert Chaz Shoot. Uh, He is a very good writer and uh, publishes books. You can get them on Amazon. Um, His last name is C-H-A-Z-Z space shoot C-H-U-T-E. 
Uh, he writes genre fiction. He wrote a series of books called This Plague of Days, which I read the first one. I'm, it's, they're on my bedside table. And I'll get to them. Uh, the first one's very good. It's uh, zombie fiction. He's also written Robots versus Humans, a series of books on robot uh, horror type genre fiction. And his new book is called Amid, A-M-I-D, Mortal Words. He calls it Lovecraftian. It has twists and sharp turns in cosmic horror. And uh, it's about uh, what if you could erase all the bad people in the world with mere words? Boy, that sounds like it's right up our alley. (laughs) Every podcast is dream, yes. Amid mortal words, we stand between the living and the dead by Robert Chaz. Shoot, he sent me a copy. Thank you for sending that to me. Uh, That's on my nightstand, too. And uh, like I said, I read his first book. Cover to cover, uh, the plague of this plague of days book, and he's a good writer, so I'm looking forward to this new one, and uh, check it out. So thank you. Uh, I'd also like to repeat our thanks to everyone who cheered us on as we crossed the 500 er- episode barrier. Absolutely, science science said it was impossible, couldn't be done. <laughs> no one could break the 500 episode barrier. But we did it with all your help and your support yeah. and your love. We're not really the only it. ones, but but we're one of the few. Yes, we there's are. like three. Yes, we are. No, there's like no, three other, two other podcasts. No, that's not nope. true. But No, it's not true at all. No, <laughs> but, but we are grateful to our listeners and we love you. And uh, thank you. Keep those cards and letters coming. We love hearing from you, as we always say. Hey, Drift Class, let's do a uh, quick news roundup. All right. I'll take number one, if you don't mind. Go right ahead. Uh, those border detention camps are actually worse than everyone mm. thought. There's a report from the Department of Homeland Security's independent watchdog organization that found squalid conditions at migrant detention camps are more widespread than initially revealed. Surprise, surprise. A federal judge blocked Attorney General William Barr's order to indefinitely detain immigrants seeking asylum. They have to have a hearing and be released within seven days, I believe the federal judge says. We'll see how much of a constitutional crisis we have over all of the things that judges are telling Donald Trump he has to do. Another federal judge, or perhaps it's the same one, ordered Customs and Border Patrol to let health experts into detention facilities holding migrant children in order to assess their needs and ensure the facilities are safe and sanitary. Basic Geneva Convention stuff mm-hmm. is what the Trump administration is balking at doing for children. And and the Republican base loves it. They love it. They love That's it. why they they're love- doing it. They're yeah. they're pro torture. Republicans like torturing people. They especially like torturing kids. I don't know why, but they sure as hell do. Trump claimed that he is absolutely moving forward with including the citizenship question on the 2020 census, contradicting both the Justice Department and the Commerce Secretary and the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. And he called news reports fake that say he's not going to do it. Yeah, it's. <laughs> uh, the National Park Service spent two and a half million dollars of your money. Uh, which was meant to improve parks in order to cover the uh, costs and expenses associated with Donald Trump's Soviet-style parade on the National Mall. Could, aren't you? Aren't you just proud, Blue Gown? No, it was terrible. But my friends in Washington D.C. say the weather was too bad for fireworks, but they did them anyway, and it created mm-hmm. horrible smoke throughout the city. It stinks like rotten eggs, and it's like a fog now of mm-hmm. sulfur gas. Over the city. Yeah, it's like hell yeah. on earth. Like yeah. hell on earth. And that's that's about right. Uh, Trump defended the cost of his Salute to America event, saying it will be very little compared to what it is worth because it will be, quote, the show of a lifetime. Show of a lifetime. It'll be so great. Military chiefs were ordered to stand with Trump during the event. And uh, Lou Dobbs called them snowflakes uh, for resisting yeah. dear leader, you know. Yeah. Well, and as someone pointed out on Twitter, I don't know who this is. Donald Trump spent a shitload of your tax money to create um, campaign commercial footage for yeah. his run uh, for re-election. That's all this yeah. was. Pictures of him with bombers flying overhead and pictures of him talking to crowds. That's This was one giant campaign commercial um, footage created uh, for campaign commercials paid for you by Don- letting Donald Trump shit all over the 4th of July. Great. Good move. Thanks, Republicans. Uh, to no one's surprise, Trump will hold a Fox News content generation rally in North Carolina on the same day Robert Mueller was scheduled to testify publicly in Congress. Well, and yesterday, Thursday, there was an earthquake in California. Mm-hmm. 
and MSNBC led their hour with the earthquake and CNN led their hour with the earthquake and Fox News, according to one tweet, you know, did you know Donald Trump invented the 4th of July? <laughs> he did. You know, uh, before him, there was just the third and we jumped yeah. right to the fifth. And he he pried those two days apart and put the 4th of July right in there, right where it should be. Bless his little heart. The little Trump hands. administration has moved on to argue that Congress has no oversight authority over the executive branch at all. They are only allowed access to information that would serve, quote, legitimate, unquote, legislative purposes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know there's this guy, President Obama, who yeah. that didn't count for him. Yeah. Obama who? I never don't, don't yeah. know that guy. Yeah, yeah. And this is this is the point at which you just sort of stop doing that. Not me, not you, but just it's pointless to try to argue with people who believe this is true because mm -hmm. they either are legitimately lobotomized. They have no memory of anything that happened before Tuesday or they don't care. Uh, they're either too stupid or too evil to argue with. They're just trash. And you don't argue with trash. You just remove it from the pretty landscape and move on with the rest of your life. Um, so there's really no point in debating with these people because there's no, there's no, nothing to debate. Um, Ivanka Trump, you remember her blue gal? Uh, this is, this is breaking through the news bubble. Yeah, it is. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. She was the unofficial stand-in for diplomats and government officials at meetings with world leaders at the G20 summit in South Korea. At the Demilitarized Zone last week, Ivanka called the experience surreal. She's not the only one, man. It's, it was surreal, all right. Yep. And Donald Trump is going blind, by the way. He yep. cannot see. Right. And, uh, and his he brain is, is confused. Broke. He yep. is confused. And she ha I am absolutely convinced that she has to be there to keep him calm or knowing where he is or to guide him you know he can walk down a red carpet <laughs> and mm -hmm. that's but but he has vision problems that's obvious mm -hmm. and uh he has uh speech problems cognizant cognizance problems and mm -hmm. uh has a very difficult time with sundowning behavior uh when he travels and that's he's got to have a trusted person next to him and that's ivanka and if if we don't do something about this soon. Uh, this is this is a problem. We're going to have to impeach Ivanka Trump, clearly. Well, you know, she wants to be Secretary of State, apparently. And there is a whole segment, 33% of this country, that is fine as long as there's a blonde spokesmodel mm -hmm. serving up fascism. Hey, you know, and, hey. and they trust her like he does. They trust her like Trump does. So as long as she wears short skirts and sits at a glass desk, like in Fox News, mm -hmm. they're fine with it. Yeah. They don't really care if she nukes some country or doesn't or Donald or is Trump. Or an idiot just, in front of world or, leaders. Right. Doesn't matter. I mean, doesn't matter yeah. any of them. They're just they're just as as I've said, reprogrammable meat bags who will believe anything Sean Hannity tells them. No wall for you. <laughs> <laughs> a federal judge blocked Trump from using two point five billion dollars in military funding to build his wall at the southern border. Womp womp. womp womp. There's a new study that correlates Donald Trump's rise in popularity during the 2016 campaign with, wait for it, social media activity by Russian trolls and bots by the of the Internet Research Agency. Now, the study doesn't prove a linear relationship that Russian interference swung the election. However, researchers at the University of Tennessee found that for every 25,000 retweets by accounts connected to the IRA, Trump's poll numbers went up by 1%. Yep. That's pretty clear what Russia was doing all along for their cipher in the White House. Donald Trump Jr. shared, then deleted, a tweet questioning if Kamala Harris was black enough to discuss the black American experience. Yeah, that was mighty white of him, wasn't it, Blue oh, Gal? Oh, man. I, I just... I I am so embarrassed uh, for my country and for the government of my country. I, I am just I don't I don't know who to go to to apologize uh, to officially. Mm -hmm. But on behalf of the majority of us who, for some reason, don't run our country and are appalled by this, I'd like to apologize to the entire world for the Trump family, the Republican Party and everyone who did all the terrible things for the last 40 years that made it possible for that monster to sit in that White House. Speaking of uh, speaking of sadness versus tragedy, yeah. the Donald Trump presidency is a tragedy for this country. It, it truly is. And and this after the Bush administration, you know, we talked about how it would be the work of a generation to clean up the mess yeah. that they left behind. Yeah. Uh, 
presuming that Republicans would just stop fucking things up and let us do it. They didn't. So now we're talking about uh, the country that you and I knew 20 years ago, even 20 years ago, is gone. That version of American democracy is now gone, in my opinion. That is not coming back. Mm -hmm. Uh, The work of going forward is to figure out what kind of country we want to build on the rubble that Republicans have created of of our democracy. Because there's no going back. There's no way to get Republicans to start being civil and civilized and working nice with other people and caring about anything other than their donors. That's never going to happen. So the question becomes, what kind of country are are we going to build on top of the bones of the country that we're leaving behind? Mm -hmm. And that is a tragedy. That is a real tragedy. And the the scope of that, the sheer kind of soul-killing scope of what has happened to our country at the hands of evil people who were put in office by our fellow citizens, uh, is something that we haven't really coped with or grieved over or come to terms with, except, frankly, liberals uh, who saw this coming for decades. Well, uh, the and, House- and Gavin Newsom, I showed you a clip of an interview that Axios did with Gavin Newsom two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And he was really clear that where the Republican Party nationally is going is where the Republican Party in California is, which is this severe minority party that doesn't believe in taxation <laughs> and right. wants to live on their golf course and uh, hate brown people. That that, and, right. But they are marginalized to the point where they can't do any harm in California. And he yeah. said, he actually said, I have empathy for Republicans like Mitch McConnell because their party is going to die. I've seen it happen mm-hmm. here in California. Mm-hmm. And This is the direction it's going. And uh, the interviewer for Axios said, you know, this is the least bullshitty interview (laughs) I've ever had. And he said, because I'm not running for president. I can tell you these things. You know, I don't have to I don't have to pretend that, uh, you know, both sides. Right. I don't have to pretend the both sides bullshit. So. No. Well, last but not least, the House House Ethics Committee is investigating Representative Matt Gates for threatening to release embarrassing personal information about Michael Cohen. That witness would be tampering. Awesome. Yeah, witness tampering. That's Absolute what it is. Absolute mob tampering. And since, style witness tampering. Yeah. And the Florida bar which, is also examining and maybe taking away his law license. So, yeah. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Bernie. Now, I got to warn you about Bernie. Bernie is an amazing looking cat. But he's Uh a hairless cat. And some people uh, get a little creeped out by that. Bernie is beautiful. And let Bernie be Bernie, okay? (laughs) That's right. Let him stop talking about Bernie. Bernie's beautiful. Bernie's beautiful. Uh, He's definitely Mm -hmm. descended from space cats, though. He would be a perfect, uh, you know, science fiction cat. From the future. From the far, far future. From the the far, far future. And uh, you should Mm -hmm. visit Bernie at our Facebook page and website. And of course, Bernie loves freshly poured cat food. Our fake sponsor. Whether you buy Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the cat food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my lord, it's freshly poured. You can visit Bernie at our Facebook page or website, and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. That reminds me that uh, Dogface Herman wanted me to do a shout-out and say, go Nurses Unions as well, because when he was uh, getting better... Uh, the nurses took really, really good care of him. Yes, yes. Don't forget our gourmet yeah. coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. It's a labor of love, but it's our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address information. Both sides don't merch. Uh, buy us a coffee. All kinds of things are there at proleftpod.com. 
We finally met our goal for GoFundMe to uh, repair little Bertha, and we appreciate that so much. Thank you. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, blue gal, the Internet Kitties want to welcome Zeppo to Kitty Valhalla. Kitty Valhalla. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DG.